Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Live Boldly with Sarah. Tonight we're going to talk about moving. I just got done walking the beach tonight here in California and I had this massive realization that I have lived in California for approximately 20 years. And by the way, I never wanted to move here. I'm just going to make that statement very clear. I was born and raised in Wisconsin. I had family back there, a career. I loved my job. I was an art teacher. I loved my students. I loved my home and I didn't want to move. And I did. And I moved for my former husband and his career. So I then had this other realization tonight. Do you know in all of the times that I have moved in my life, which typically is between every five to seven years, I've lived in several states. In California alone, I've lived in three, uh, four homes. Do you realize, of course you don't, because I just realized this tonight. I have never moved for me. I have always moved to a location or a space for somebody else, for their career, or for where they wanted to live. I am 51 years old and I have never moved to where I wanted to actually explore and live. So here I am now on the cusp, right? My youngest son is going to be graduating from high school next year. He's going to be going to college. And I'm on the precipice again, right? I'm on the cusp of this move. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know what state I'm going to go live in. I have no idea if I'm going to go live on a boat or if I'm going to be in a home or a yurt. What I do know, especially tonight after my little reflection time, my walking on the beach, is that I am going to make damn sure that wherever it is that I move to, it's because it's my choice and that it's going to fill my heart, my soul, and where I really desire to go. Because it's about time. So here's my question for you. Are you living where you want to live? Or are you living there to appease somebody else? The other piece to this is, if you are living someplace where you don't want to live, what are the steps that you can take right now to pivot, to problem solve, and to take that leap and go live where your heart desires. Now, when I moved here to California uh, 20 years ago-ish, I did not want to live in California, okay? I already said, like, this was not my, this was not my jam. The thing, though, that my mom used to say to me all the time was, Sarah, you're really good at making any place that you go, you're really good at learning to love it and learning to appreciate that space, regardless if it's someplace where you didn't choose to go to in the first place. And she's right. And as I was walking the beach tonight thinking about this, I was also thinking about how so many of the places that we live is a house. A house has four walls. Ultimately though, where I wanna live, where my moving is going to be too, is creating a home. And this is what I have talked to my boys about post-divorce. When we sold our 4,200 square foot home and we literally moved across the street into an 800 square foot rental, my two younger boys and I did, I talked to them about how we are creating a home. It's not about the walls. It's about what's within the walls. And what's within the walls, that those are your values. Those are your, that's your family structure. And for me, I wanted them to bring whatever it was that touched their heart and their soul into the space. That's well, because we only had 800 square feet on top of it. It's not like we had a lot of space for them to bring all the multiple Legos and all the things that they wanted to bring over. That said though, I wanted to strip it down and to really make sure that we were focusing on what was important because that's what creates a home. And it's something to remind yourself of wherever it is that you're moving to in your life right now as well. If you are, you know, moving literally metaphorically or moving into a new job or moving into a new career or into a relationship or 
maybe into a yurt. I don't know. It's all about what's within it, right? It's not about the exterior. It's not about the walls themselves. It's about what you bring into that space that matters most. And so as I was reflecting on this and I was thinking about what my mom told me, oh, God, I miss her so much. When I think about when she and I were talking about this, like, Sarah, wherever it is that you go, you just make it, you make it home for you, right? That's the one thing that you're really good at. And as I was reflecting on that, I was thinking about what can I share with all of you that will help you to do the same thing? First of all, if you're like me right now, let's even back the truck up. If you're like me right now and you're like, I, I'm not really exactly happy where I'm at right now and I don't know where I want to move to, go back to what makes you happy. Go back to creating a list of the things that bring you joy. And for me, there are some very big things that bring me joy that make me very, very happy where if, I'm, if I don't have this, I don't feel grounded. And one, it's the mountains. I love the mountains. And right now I live by the ocean. And I've actually even sat with that. Like, would I, would I want to be by the ocean or would I want to be by the mountains? And to be honest with you, as I'm in my reflecting period right now of like, where am I going to go? I've experienced the ocean. I haven't actually gotten to experience living directly in the mountains. So I'm like leaning more towards that. Like, where can I go where I'm in the mountains and I have more space and where I can, you know, have big windows and look out and see the views and the peaks and the valleys and the animals. And I haven't had that. And so for me, it's about what can I also, where can I move to where I can experience an adventure in something new? And so Think about that same thing within your own space. If you're even in that, that like, where do I want to go to next? Put it all on the table. I often say like, like use every medium possible within your life, get creative with it and narrow it down from the large to the small, right? To the, okay, well, at least now I know I want to be in this part of the country or this part of the world or this part of wherever, right? Remembering though, always going back to that space, right? Where you're moving to, you create your home itself with the values and what's most important to you. So when you do move, there's always, and I talk about this a lot, there's always going to be the periods of the ups and the downs. You're gonna have the peaks, you're gonna have the valleys. You're going to have some of those days where maybe you even regret moving, right? Where you're like, oh, maybe this wasn't such a great idea, okay? The thing is that you that is so important when you first step into the space of moving is embrace the adventure of the move. Embrace it for what it is, right? That's the step one. Embrace the adventure of the move. You are experiencing something that you've never experienced before. And that is something so freaking beautiful because you're opening yourself up to new opportunities, to new relationships, to new possibilities. You're opening yourself up to all these other things that you wouldn't have access to had you not made that choice in the first step, in the first place to actually take that step into moving. So embrace it as the adventure that it is. That was one of the biggest things that I had to do when I moved out to California, because understand Wisconsin's work, it's kind of flat back there, right? We don't have the mountains and the ocean and like the culture, like we did, I mean, I was in a small little town. It just all these things that we were, I was opening myself up to. It was a lot. And I actually, it was almost like overload for me. And I had to pull it back a little bit and, and really sit with, okay, this is, this is a big adventure, right? One step at a time, Sarah. So embrace the adventure. The second thing is, which is very important Get yourself into a routine that works for you rather quickly. Get yourself into a routine that keeps you right in the space, right? So that you have a little bit of a schedule, if you will. Whatever it is that you like to do back home and where you moved from, right? Your other home uh, into this new home. 
whatever it was that you like to do back there, bring that forward with you here. So if you like to run in the morning, get yourself out in the morning here in your new home and go for a run. Try to run in new places every day because that's going to allow you to experience, to explore this new space that you're also in. Getting yourself into a routine will help you to stay in that space of organization, right? And also uh, remind you, it'll give you gratitude every single day as well. So get yourself into a routine that works for you. The third thing is get to know your area, which is goes back from the fir- from what I just mentioned. Getting to know your area can happen in many, many different ways, okay? So if you have kids, for example, when I moved to California and my kids were young, I got to explore the new area by enrolling the children into things that also helped me to get to know other people too. Like I remember um, my my I, my youngest was not or it was not born yet, and I had my middle son, and I wanted to explore the hills where I was living, the mountains, and so I enrolled my middle son and myself into a mother son hiking group, and we would meet up in all these random places and we would go hike. But it was really fun because he got to meet new friends and I got to meet new friends and I got to explore the area. He also saw his uh, very first tarantula on one of the hikes and he freaked out and had a hard time going back. So (laughs) it was just like all these little, these little experiences that also give you such great memories as well. So explore the area as in different ways, whatever way works for you. All right. Um, you know, meetups are huge, uh, going in and, and having all these different meetups, hiking groups. Uh, I was in Colorado with a former client not too long ago, and she was telling me about Facebook groups that they have in Colorado for people, all different kinds of Facebook groups, hiking groups, uh, meetups, just to get to know other families, all sorts of things. And so I encourage you to, Put yourself out there and get a little courageous, get a little confident, put yourself out there and meet new people in that way and get to know your space. The uh, fourth thing that was very, very important for me was staying connected with my family and my friends from where I just moved from, while also creating new connections with friends, new friends in this new space. You, for me, I, I found it to be very, very huge. I thought I it was it was huge for me to continue the connections with my friends back home, and also more so than anything, really wanting to stay connected to my family because now we have states apart, right? Like we're states apart, and you know my my parents didn't get to spend all of that time in person with my kids. And so we would do, uh, back then it was Skype. We did Skype calls. Now we do FaceTime calls. I would FaceTime my mom every single morning. And sometimes my dad would pop in. I, I, I like FaceTiming was a huge thing when that came into play. Right. Um, or make little videos and just send them to them and tell them how you're doing. And, really bring them into the space with you, right? Because it is an adventure. And then the fifth thing is acknowledge your emotions along the way. That was a huge one for me because I went through, especially, especially during the seasons, I went through some depression. You know, in Wisconsin, we have the four seasons. In California, you don't. (laughs) And so when Christmas came around and there wasn't any snow falling from the sky, I got depressed when, you know, spring came and I was like, okay, like this, this is not what I've expected because in springtime in Wisconsin, things just look different. They smell different. You know, you're going from the season of the winter into this rebirth and you don't really have that here because it's always sunny. And so, you know, for me, it was acknowledging my emotions of what I was missing and also having appreciation for what I have while here. So again, going back to the top five things, these five steps, they're so huge. Embrace the adventure, 
Uh, enroll yourself in a routine very quickly. Get to know your new area, however that works best for you. Stay connected with your family and your friends back home while also creating new connections with friends here. And then again, the fifth is so important. Acknowledge your emotions along the way because they matter, your feelings matter. And acknowledging them uh, also gives you the opportunity to dive deep into them and to create the happiness on the other side. So moving can be one of the most beautiful things ever because not only are you moving in your physical state, but you're moving in your mental, your emotional, your spiritual state as well. This again goes for any kind of move. If it is into a new home, into a new state, if it's into a new job, a career, a relationship, whatever it is, just remember it doesn't have to suck. I say that to my clients all the time. I'm like, this work, like doing all of this, I know it can be really hard and it can be so much fun on the other side. The most important thing that I, and I've talked to this about this a lot, we all go through hard times, right? Including things with moving. Don't set up camp in the hard. Just remember that on the other side of that hard, there is so much opportunity for growth and beauty and love and freedom and peace and adventure in this lifetime. I hope this helps you, whatever move that you're in right now. And please share this with your friends, share it with your family members, post it on social media, tag me so that I can also reshare in mine. More important than anything though, please go subscribe, rate, and review these podcast episodes. And then if you don't mind, go into the comments, right? Uh, go into the comments and let me know where are you moving to? And if you think that there's some place that I should move to, I'd love to hear it because I'm open and I am looking and I am excited because I'm in this next space of my life as well. So have a wonderful rest of your day. I love you and keep taking those steps forward.